straight into, if anyone wants, there's a paper over there, feel free. Hefsik Kedera, one of the more um, fascinating sugyas in Shabbos. And what's interesting is probably, I hope, if we were to take a poll, what people do, what people do, maybe we would get it right. Maybe. We'll have to get there. But the real question here is why. And with understanding why, we'll hopefully come up with a lot of dinim in Elcha Shabbos. The basic question is, Shabbos morning, you want to heat something up. You want to heat up schnitzel, you want to heat up kogel, you maybe want to heat up a meat, you want to heat up something with sauce. What exactly goes on over here? So many different areas of Bishel really converge into this sugya of heating up something on Shabbos. So before we... Before we even go into what we're about to go into, as a, as a one word of Akdama, which is a lot of it we've touched upon, is you have to know when is there an Isser Bishel on Shabbos? That's the one thing we need to know before we go into the Mar Mekemis over here. When is there an Isser Bishel on Shabbos? So the answer is when you cook something. But we know, Machlech is Rishayinah, but we Paskin, Ein Bishel Achar Bishel. That, those words are... Um, I don't want to say they're confusing words, and not that they're not true. But Ein Bishel Achar Bishel is, of course, true. But it's only going to be on something dry. Just something, keep that in your mind, not on something wet. And hopefully, within, we'll come back to this detail. So let's start over here. If you see in this paper, we broke this into that we have a Yakdama, followed by how does it work? Garaf Vikatum. We'll translate those words in a moment. Then we have Nisina, putting something on for the first time. We're going to ask a stira, and then we're going to come up with the halacha, how do you warm up a schnitzel, a kugel, or things like that. And again, hopefully, this is probably going to be the last year we have ambitious, so hopefully within, we'll try to cover some of the sidebar shaylas that maybe we didn't fully touch upon. So, let's begin. We have to begin, is that anytime you're taking something in Shabbos and you're putting it onto a flame, there's two things that you're potentially doing. Number one is you're putting something on a flame. Number two is you're... Re- quote unquote, returning something to a flame. Meaning, if we were to try to open up a Mishtabura, Shulchan Aruch, and look for where does it discuss putting something onto a flame, we're going to have two things that we're going to have to contend with. We're going to have to contend with a potential bishel, and then we're going to have to contend with, wait, we already learned about putting things onto a flame, which is returning things to a flame. Let's get there. So over here we have that there's two reasons why you can't do what we coin Nisina Lichatchila on Shabbos. Machlik is Rishainim. Rabbi Nutam over here in the Sefer Ayasha writes that the reason is we're worried Shema Yechate Bigachalim. Those are coin words in all of Bishel. What does Shema Yechate Bigachalim mean? You might come to stoke the coals. Stoke the coals. What does it mean to stoke the coals? That means you're cooking on an uh, open barbecue with coals and you throw the steak down and it's not cooking. So what do you do? You give the coals a little bit of a poke, you stoke them, and you bring out more heat. This is the reason. We spoke about extensively chazara, which we're going to get to in a moment. But we spoke about that the only time you could take your chalan and put it back, the only time you could take your kugel and put it back is if the flame is covered. We said in the world of a chalant, what that meant is you have to have some sort of foil lining your crackpot. The, the crackpot itself, the outside is boiling hot metal, that's called the ash, and you have to line it. Why? Because of this concern. Shema yechate begacholim, you might stoke the coals. Now one here is sitting and wondering, might stoke the coals, what in the world's going on over here? You covered over the, let's go into just good old fashioned oven, four gas, ga, gas burners, I put a blech on top of it. Everyone knows what a blech is, a blech is a metal sheet. Well, that's what we call a blech. We'll get there in a moment today. Blech is a metal sheet over the four burners. Now I'm not going to stoke the coals. Really? Why not? Why not? The, the, the knobs are, are still right in front of you. Why won't I stoke the coals? Anyone have a reason why this works? Uh, so it's a reminder. It's a reminder. Do you have to cover the, the, the knobs? So this is one of the things that people sort of make a little bit of a mistake on. And people are very into, I cover the knobs but they don't cover the fire. Ramesha Feinstein, who we're going to see, is a proponent. He likes you to cover the knobs. But in addition to covering the fire, just uh, for honesty purposes, there is a sheet out there that holds to just cover the knob. And, and I say is a sheet out there, you're probably wondering, that that's ludicrous. A sheet, that should be the most normal thing. If I have to cover, if you don't want to stoke it, cover the knob. So the answer is that Chazal made a taikana, and the taikana was in the fire. 
You have to do something to the fire. That's, this is a simple lump, that's how to explain it. Rav Aaron Kohler famously held just to cover the knobs. That was Rav Aaron's chiddish. Whether this actually works out in reality, meaning, is that what the Mishvacha does? I do not know. I've asked certain family members, and I have not received a conclusive answer, whether they also cover the flame. Rav Aaron writes it. They write it. I don't, I don't think he writes it, actually. They write it b'shmai. I don't think he wrote it anywhere. They write it b'shmai. It's not like a Mishnah Rav Aaron. It wasn't, you know, there was no share Klali on him covering his uh, crack by knob. But it, this is his shita. But that's covering, that's Shema Yechate Begachalam. You can't walk away from Bishal without knowing those words. You might come to stoke the coals. Number, what? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I know they all bring it, but good. The Rajba. Comes along the Rajba, and the Rajba says, what is the reason you're not allowed to put something onto a flame on Shabbos? Because it looks like cooking. Nira kimivashel b'Shabbos. It looks like cooking. Very important. So now, whatever we're going to get to, we have to make sure that these two reasons are going to be sufficed. Meaning, the flame is going to have to be covered, and it can look like cooking. Do those two things necessarily go together? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. If I take a chicken soup out of my fridge and I put it on top of a blech on the oven, does that look like cooking? Sure, it looks like cooking to me. You just took something and you put it on top of it just because there's a metal sheet there and makes it not look like cooking. It certainly looks like cooking. Furthermore, there you'd have an issue that the liquid itself might be cooking. So these are the two basic things we have to contend with. However, with these two issues, what do we already learn is mutter? Something called chazara. Something called chazara. What is chazara? We remind ourselves. There's five conditions. We played it out with the story. We'll say the five conditions. It has to be fully cooked. It has to be partially warm. It has to be garuf vikatum. Again, key words. What is garuf vikatum? Garuf vikatum means the flame that we're nervous, shema yechate, you might stoke it. Is garuf vikatum the flame? We're just going to use those words as it's covered. It means you spread ash and one on top of the coals. You're holding it and you have to ask to return it. Okay, that's chazara. Those are our concerns. Let's get involved in what we call a hefsik kadir. And here we're going to learn the fascinating sheet of the chazoin ish. I don't know if this is very known. Chazin ish holds that you don't, can, you're not allowed to use a blech on Shabbos. Can I use a blech on Shabbos? Let's understand what's going on over here. So we begin with the Shulchan Aruch, Reish Nun Gimel, Sif Gimel. Hamashkin Baboiker. You wake up Shabbos morning, and you see that your food is burning. The Yare, and you're worried, Pen It might burn further. What are you allowed to do? Says the Shulchan Aruch, Yochol Ahasir, remove the food. Ulahaniach, a Kedera Yeshana Rekonis, put an empty pot over the flame, Alpi Akira. Then return back the pot. Be careful. Key words. Says the Shulchan Aruch. Be careful. Don't put the pot on the floor. Why? Who cares if I put the pot on the floor? So we know that one of the conditions of Chazara was you have to hold it in your hand the whole time. But one second. What does that show me? That shows me that when something is not in my hand the whole time, Am I allowed to put it on this overturned pan on top of my flame? No. Again, let's play this out in slow motion. I have a soup. I have my chalan on top of a flame. It's burning. Take off chalan or soup. Cover with empty pan, empty pot. Take chalan and soup. Put it back. Says the Shulchan Aruch, be careful. Don't put the item down in between. Why? Because then you won't be able to put it back. Which means, in simple English, can I put something on if it wasn't from a flame? It would seem not. Very good. Comes along the Mishnah Bura. What is the reason why this is allowed? Because when you put the overturned pot on top of the flame, that makes your flame garuf vikatum. That makes your flame, uh, creates a black for all intents and purposes, and therefore it's going to be mutter. Comes along Ramesha Feinstein, and Ramesha says, this is the makar for a black. But is this the exact same thing as a black? Could you, anyone suggest a difference between what we would call a blech and this pot overturned on top of a flame? We definitely could suggest a difference. Which one looks more normal? Your blech looks much, much more normal. This overturned pot on top of your flame that you're putting your chalm back over definitely does not look like it's going to be cooking. 
Says Ramayisha Weinstein, you're allowed to put on a sheet of metal onto your oven, and that's called a blech. Ramayisha adds, does the blech have to come down and cover the knobs? Do they make those here in America? They make them here also? Does it have to come down? He says it does not have to. Efshar yesh lahatir, even if it's not covering the knobs. Lamaisa comes along the Chazanish, and the Chazanish says, a blech does not work. Why? Didn't the Shulchan Aruch just teach us it does work? Says the Chazanish. If you do what the Shulchan Aruch said, it works. But not if you take a piece of metal and cover the flame. If you take an empty pot and you cover over a flame, then that gives it a din of garuf v'katam. Why? What's the difference? Two reasons that are different, says the Chazanish. Number one, we already said, is that what? It looks odd. Number two is tire, meaning uh, good, meaning there's air between your flame and your top of your pot. You can understand, which is really, you know, anytime people use blechs, if you ask them, you hear fascinating answers. You ask them, why do you use a blech on Shabbos? You say, what do you mean? It spreads the heat better. No, it gives you more service area to put food down to cook. These are all the reasons why you can't use a blech on Shabbos. And that's exactly why the Chazinish says it's us, sir. Says the Chazinish, if you have an overturned pot, which looks odd, no one will ever say, oh, it's Reza heat better. It's quite strange. And you have a space between the flame and the top of your pot, however big that is, then that will work. It's not derech vishal, etc. However, to put down a piece of metal, the Chazinish disallows. Which, if you remember, going back to last week, we made a mention that the Chazinish allowed you to take chalent when it was on the flame. And we said it could be, and we read the words of the Chazinish, and the Chazinish said, why? He said, because you have no other choice. And everyone wondered, why is there no other choice? Just take off the chalent, have your black, and put it back in. The answer is the Chazinish doesn't hold that works. <laughs> you could somehow yeshivishly figure out a way to like do it. It doesn't really work so well. Hence why the Chazinish said it doesn't work, and therefore he'll let you do it from inside. So number one is, we have this entity called a black. And everything is good. But what did this blech just allow for us? Slow. It allowed only chazara. Meaning, when something is on a flame, I can take it off, take, add water if need be from heat source, not from sink. We went there already. Then take it, put it back. Assuming it's fully cooked, I adas, I held on to it, and it was warm. Can I now go into my fridge, take out a piece of schnitzel, and put it on top of my blech? We have no heter yet. The opposite, based on what we just said, what would it come out? It would be usr. Because the Shulchan Aruch said the only time it's mutter is if you didn't put down the pot. Clearly implying if the item wasn't from the flame, then it should be a problem. So that is Rish Nun Gimel Sif Gimel. Continues the Shulchan Aruch two Sifim later. In Sif Hey, says the Shulchan Aruch. Mutter. La says, al pi kediras chamin b'shabis. What do you allow to put on the... Uh, what do you let heat up? Tavshil shenitz bashel me erev Shabbos. Something that it was cooked on erev Shabbos kol tsarkoi. Kigoyin pandish, kiyotze bahen, some sort of kinish type of matziv. Lachamimon. Lefi she'ein derech bishel b'kach. So now it comes on the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says, you're allowed to put something that was cooked on erev Shabbos. Here, does the Shulchan Aruch make mention that it couldn't be put on the floor? No. Here it sounds like when something is fully cooked, we don't know exactly the case, but when something is fully cooked, you could take it from the fridge, right? Fridge is called cooked Arab Shabbos, and put an oven on Shabbos. Okay, the rabbi here maybe disagrees. We have to get involved in that. But anyone reading the Shulchan Aruch, just straight back to back, Siv Gimel, to Siv hey. We have a clash in what's going on over here. So without even reading the Mishnah Gurus on the bottom, we flip over the page, and what I just said is the Bir Halacha's kash. Says the Bir Halacha, that I don't understand what's going on over here. In Siv Gimel, it was Asr to put on something like Chatzchila and Shabbos. In Siv Hay, it is Mutter to put on something on Shabbos. That's the first Bir Halacha quoted over here, the first snippet. That is his kasha. What is the Bir Halacha's teretz? So he brings the terrorists of Dagal Mervava. We don't bring over here because Allah says it's Dachlik. He doesn't want to get involved in it. Then he brings the Primi Gadim. Let's read this together. It's the second source on the back side of the paper. It says the Bir Halacha. 
אחריך מצאת בפרי מגדם שיעשב זו הקושר בטוב טעם. והוא, תבסיף ה' שאיירי בימדס על גבי קדירס חמין אוי תפשל. סיף ה' which allowed you, we'll use our terminology, take something from the fridge and put it on top of the blech, was putting it on top of a pot that held food. Cholent pot. Taking from the fridge, putting it on top of the cholent pot. Then, that's not called putting it straight on the oven. Says the Bir Alacha. If I have a pot of food cooking, and to actually to say his case precisely, we'll use a chicken soup. You have a chicken soup sitting on a flame Friday night. You left your gas burner on low, your chicken soup is sitting on the flame. Perfectly mutter. There was no problem with that. Your chicken soup was fully cooked. It's sitting on the flame. Your plan was Friday night. You're going to take off the chicken soup and serve your chicken soup. Wonderful. You come home Friday night and you want to heat up your challah. Says the Bira Lacha. Sifhei teaches us, take your challah cold. Take your schnitzel cold. Put it on top of the chicken soup. Why? Because that is a kadiras chamin. It's a pot of food. Whereas, he continues, Masha'in kin, bin yoninu, in sif gimel. Shakadira reconis. What was the case in Sif Gimbal? Remind ourselves. You woke up Shabbos morning, your food was burning. So, what did you do? You took it off. You took an empty pot and you covered the flame. Then you put it back. Says the Bir Allah, if it's an empty pot, Vaimedis rak, list time as Chaim Akira, it's there just to cover up the flame. Shlaiya Kolka Chaim, it's not so hot. Then, Nasa Kira Dizer Rakish Akira Gufaktuma, that just makes it as if it's a blech, to usser, litin, alav, bishabis, tavshil, lechat, chila. Then it is usser to do nisina lechat chila. So let's explain what the Biralacha just said, and then let's see if there's ever a way that we could. Excuse me? No, no, excuse me. To place the lechat chila, not lechat chila b'diavid. Here, place the lechat chila means take it from the fridge. So that wasn't on the flame. Oh, let's get there. I think that that's going to be the big question. But let's first say what the Berlach says, and then that's exactly where we're going to have to go next. That's where some Zalman and uh, Shevet Levi come. Yeah. Do you have a cover, then, or cover which part? If you take the chala, put it on the good. The cover the chala. So good. Cover the chala is going to be. Going to be a, a shail of Hatman. Remind me. I want to answer that question because that's uh, that's uh, I think that's an area that everyone's machmer for no reason. So we'll get we'll get there in one moment. Get there in one moment. Remind me. Remind me in one moment. So let's just explain again what the Bir has said. We have two scenarios. We have two snapshots. Snapshot A is we have. Um, let, let's play out exactly how he says it. You know what? We don't have we. Can, we have two chicken soups cooking on our flame, okay? Flame, gas burner with a flame, and we're doing this purposely, we want to, this is his case. Gas burner with a flame, chicken soup A, chicken soup B. Says the Bir Allah, on chicken soup A, on top of the pot of chicken soup, what could I put up there? Chala, kugel, schnitzel. I'm using those examples purposely, that goes back to the hakdama we started with, as we dry foods, we'll come and we'll circle back around when we're finished. Says the Allah, in scenario B, the chicken soup was burning. How's that possible? I don't I have no clue. I guess all the liquid burnt out. Fine. So what do you want to do? You want to lower, you want to do something. So you take off the chicken soup, you take a different pot, cover the flame, and then put back the chicken soup. But in that covered pot, you let it put something on there, says the Allah, no. Says the Allah, no. That was Sif Gimel to Sif A. Again, again, let's be very, very precise. In Sif, hay was mutter to take from the fridge, is a pot of food. In Sif, gimel, which was usser, is just the overturned pot on top of the flame that is usser. Sif, gimel, on an overturned pot on top of the flame, it is usser. On a pot of food on top of the flame, it is mutter. That is the words of the beer halacha. Comes along the chazaynish. Says the Chazinish, even this I will agree to. 
if you have a pot of food, then ain't a chanami. Then you can put something on it on Shabbos. Why? Because it was a pot of food versus an empty pot. So if you have a what is the only way to do Nesina Lechatechila? The only way to put your schnitzel to warm up on Shabbos is on your chicken soup, on your chalent, on a pot of food. But if it's not a pot of food, are you allowed to put something on? Says the Chazinish, it's a Sivit Shulchan Aruch. It's a Bir Alacha. Absolutely Aser. Now the question is, is there any way around this? Because what happens if you don't have a pot of soup? Well, I think so. I thought someone was by the door. Okay, they walked away. What happens if you don't have a pot of soup, or you don't have a chalent. Is there any other way? Comes along the Shevet Alevi and the Shemir Shabbos. And the fundamental shayla that we have to ask ourselves is, now we know the difference between Sif Gimel and Sif Hay, But what is the reason that Sif Gimel is mutter, Sif Hay is mutter and Sif Gimel is Aser? What, what, let's, let's, let's speak this out together. Is it because the chicken soup had food in it? Therefore, it was mutter to put something on top of the chicken soup? Is that the reason? Or is there another reason? Meaning, in the, the case is, one was a pot of food, and one was an empty pot. Is there a way that we could create a scenario similar to the pot of food without a pot of food? So the answer is, says the Shevet Alevi, says the Shemir Shabbos, yeah. What did the pot of food accomplish? Let's remind ourselves. We had two issues that we had to take care of. We had to take care of the fact that you can't stoke the flame. And we had to take care of the fact that it can't look like cooking. So when you have a pot of food, what did that take care of? It doesn't look like cooking. Why not? No one in the world has ever taken a raw something and cooked it on top of their pot of soup, on top of their chalent pot. So it doesn't look like cooking. Says the Shevet Alevi, what if I have another way of figuring it out? Says the Shevet Alevi, let's read it together. Says the Shevet Alevi, Vini Dover Pashit Ma'aid. He felt this was very Pashit. The Zelloy Shaykh, Ella, Shakedira Hari Kanis, Oimedis Al Gabe Ish. What were the two cases that we played out very clearly? That when was it also you had a fire, that you cover the fire with your empty pot? Ubaha, who de Ikala Maymar, de Batla Le Gabe Kiris. Says the Shevet Alevi, no, it's also. Because that empty pot is an empty pot. It's just covering over your flame. It's bottle, it's nothing. It's just covering your flame. Aval, kishapach, godol al gabi kira. Let's say you have a large pot covering your flame. And then, umisim oid, and you put another pot inside that pot. Betoy chapach, kedere reikonis. Poshit meoid, it's its own thing. And then it's going to be like our chicken soup and it's going to be mutter. Says the Shevet Alevi, all we're trying to accomplish is that the covering is not bottled to the flame and it doesn't look like cooking. Says the Shevet Alevi, I'll give you an extreme way and then we'll play this out maybe in a more uh, user-friendly fashion. Says the Shevet Alevi, again, I have a gas burner. Okay, Shabbos morning, I have a gas burner on with a flame. I want to put schnitzel to heat up. What do I do? What am I not allowed to do? Just put a black down, put the schnitzel on top. That's also. Why is that also? That's Sif Gimel. Why is that all, sir? Because that metal sheet is bottled to the flame, and it's just a flame. You're not allowed to put something from the fridge on a flame. Why not? We all can understand. That looks like cooking. Proof is, you ask, you ask half the people in the world, why are you putting a black down? Because it, it spreads the heat. Because it's more user-friendly. So you tell them, I take a piece of schnitzel, and I throw it directly on the black. If you see a snapshot, someone taking a piece of schnitzel, putting it on the black, what does that look like? It looks like cooking. It's called a griddle in English. Oh, uh, Pashta says there's no difference. It's called a griddle. What's a griddle? A griddle is I have a few flames underneath, I cover it with a metal thing, and then I cook on the whole thing. That is what a blech is, if you think about it. A blech is precisely a griddle. And in our world, if you were to actually see someone take a piece of raw schnitzel, put on a blech, you think, oh, he's cooking. It's called a griddle. I don't know, he has some a little bit weird that it's like metal and not the griddle type of cast iron. But I don't know, it's a cheap type of griddle. But says the Shevet Alevi, what if you have another overturned pot then, does that look like cooking? Of course not. For example, if you have your blech, and on top of your blech, you put an overturned pot, overturned pan, and now you put your schnitzel on top of that. Does that look like cooking? Absolutely not. It looks like the oddest thing in the world. For example, for example, here, let's, let's, let's do a little visualization. Here, 
This is going to be totally ridiculous. This is not, I don't even know why I'm doing this. This is absolutely silly. Okay, here's my flame. Here's my flame. That looks more like a flame, no? The cover? Anyways, I'm covering my flame with a black. Yeah? You, you, you know, you'll remember this. Covering the flame with a black, and then I turn an overturned pot on top of it. I hope I don't break the stucco box. Then I have overturned pot on top of it. Now, I take my piece of schnitzel, Put it on top. No one in the world will think I'm cooking right now. Some of you stuck hooks. However, wait, wait for it. If, if I just had my blech and I put my shit on top of my blech, everyone thinks this is cooking. Says the Shevet Alevi, the critical difference between Sif Gimel and Sif Hay is not that it has to necessarily have food in it, a massive chiddish. Because you read the Biralacha, it's a chicken soup pot versus an empty pot. Says the Shevet Alevi, the chicken soup pot is just accomplishing that you're not cooking on top of that. So if you design your own scenario, that's not called cooking either. It comes on the Shemir Shabbos, or Shem Zalman Arbach, and he says exactly the same thing. He says, Lafi zeh mutter, gam lechat chila, laniach le Shabbos, selachat hafuchan, upside down plate, literally, uchadayma al gabe kira. Kishayin lo kedira malaya tafshal, you don't have a pot of chicken soup. Ulaniach kedira aleha, boyven shei boyven sem iser bishol. And he explains, the reason is, avalim eish kavar haisa mechusa, if your flame is covered and you put the Kedira, Kedira, Shanois Miderech Habishol, key words, it can't look like cooking, Adif Tfei, and then it's going to be Mutter. So now we can understand, number one, the world of the Paiskim, and then we can continue this thought into the world of a hot plate. Now we can actually understand why there is or isn't a heter with a hot plate. So again, if I have a Blech, Again, old, I don't know if this is old school. I don't want to get anyone insulted, but I have a blech. What's my blech? I have a blech covering over my, ga- my gas range. People still use blechs? There's even one person that, yeah, people still use, people use blechs, of course. Somewhere else they gave a shit, look at me, I'm crazy. Okay, what should I tell you? He wants to know why you're using a blech. Okay, good. How do you heat up your food? There you go, perfect. So let's get there. So people use a blech. There you go. I, use, I, I mean, blech is supposed to hot plate, precisely. People use a hot plate. People use a hot plate. Now, why have a hot plate if you use a blech? Okay. A warming draw. Oh, maybe we'll get there at the end, or maybe we'll run out of time, precisely. But let, let's get there. Let's get there. No, Mirza Shem, Mirza Shem. Maybe we'll end with a nice. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we get there. Let's see if we get there. Let's see if we get there. I'll give you your challah, the warming draw. Let's get there. Let's get there. Let, no, but the truth is, the truth is, we actually can understand now a warming draw. We really will be able to understand it very nicely in one moment, Amir Hashem. And we'll, 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 play out, we'll play out all shittas for uh, full transparency. As follows. If I have a nostalgic oven, gas range, bl- black on top of it. Beautiful. Excellent. Am I allowed to go to the fridge? Take out a kogel that's cold. Take out a chal that's cold. I know your chal's in the fridge. Take out a schnitzel that's cold and put it directly on the black. We learned today, no. And this is the, this is the area that people have confusion about. Because people know you're allowed to put on a plata, right? So I can put on a plata, I can put on a black. That, the, 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 that statement doesn't work. Let's explain it, and then we'll come back around. What's the story with a hot plate, a plata, as they call it in certain parts of the country? So a plata, Ramesha is a very famous chuva about. I apologize that it's not in these marmic comments. Ramesha writes as follows. A hot plate. She'i evshar levashel alof. These are his words. I'll ex- tell you how the Talmudim explain it. But he writes a plata that's impossible to cook on, says Ramesha. So can you have a mechzi k'mevashel? Can you look like cooking on an entity that can't cook? And if your brain is working, this is, this is where the warming draw is about to come in. Can you have an entity of cooking on something that doesn't cook? Of course not, says Ramayisha. And therefore, can you put something on your hot plate on Chavez? Yes. Again, dry foods. Dry foods. Kogel, uh, regular, well, kogel is a million types of kogel. Dry doesn't have to be dry like it's nasty. It just means dry. There's no liquid dripping out of it. A potato kugel, a schnitzel, a chal. Good. A piece of dry meat. All those items, says Ramayisha, of course you can put it in a hot plate. Why? Because it's an entity that doesn't cook. Comes along the whole world and they ask, a, a hot plate does cook. A hot plate does cook. Especially the ones in Eretz Yisrael. You take an egg, you crack it on it, it's a frying pan. I, it is. It's, it's very, very hot. 
It is. It burns down houses, God forbid. It's hot. It's extremely hot. The Talmudim explained what Ramesha meant was it's not normal to cook on it. It's not normal to cook on it. Which you could understand. I, I mean, it's a little bit difficult in, in the wording. Yeah? Good. So what's the difference? It looks like it's still Oh, very good. So, so that, that actually helps what the Talmudim are trying to say because what seems like was going on is that they showed Ramesh this new entity called the hot plate. And Ramesh said, what does this thing do? They said it's made to warm up food. So Ramesh viewed this item as something that doesn't cook. That's what he writes. Now, you're bringing up a good point. Nowadays, we have these little portable burners and portable grill, griddles. So if you look at three different items, very often you can't even tell which is the griddle and which is the hot plate. It, it is a very good point. So wait, go to go. That's the, ne- that's the next point. That's the next point. The temperature is going to be the next point. That's where Ramesha writes. That's where Ramesha, the Israeli ones don't have temperatures on them. They just have a plug. So hopefully it has just a plug. You never know. Sometimes, you know, some, sometimes. So you have just a plug. Good. That's where Ramesha writes. Based off of this tshuva, Rav Silcha Budim Kohn writes in the famous art school book, he writes that one is allowed to put foods directly onto a hot plate on Shabbos. Why? Didn't we just learn you either have to have a pot of chicken soup or an overturned pan on top of the blech? The answer is this is not a blech. A blech is something that cooks. A blech is within the gezerah of looking like cooking. This is not within the gezerah. Why is it not within the gezerah? It says Ramesha, because you don't cook on such an item. It's a shevet alevi that writes similar. That's what many of this farm write. Others come along, and especially nowadays, that they have hot plates with knobs that have settings. And they certainly could cook. Based off of that, and I believe, uh, 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 based off of that, let's just leave names and faces out because I don't have it in front of me. Many say, so what should you do? Treat your hot plate light like a blech. What does that mean? Not such a big deal. All that means is don't put the food directly onto it. Put it onto some level of overturned pan. Why? Because again, no one takes out raw food from the, from the fridge, takes an overturned pan, puts it on top of their thing, and then puts it on top of it. It doesn't look like cooking. There's no mechzi kimavashel. Now, what does it mean overturned pan? It means overturned pan. Can I crush the pan? Everyone wants to know. Probably the answer is yes. Can you flatten the pan so it's no longer a pan? Probably the answer is no. Because if it's not a pan, then what does it look like? It looks like you're putting it directly on the plate. We're dealing with the mechzi. We're dealing with what it looks like. So therefore, but can you crush a pan? People like taking muffin tins because muffin tins have more space and things. Yeah, why not? You can do all these different things. Why? Because it doesn't look like cooking. When you come to this hot plate, and what do you see? You see a bunch of crushed up pans on it, and then you have a whole pile of food to uh, who knows where. No one in the world is cooking. It's clearly warming, and therefore that would be mutter. Now comes along the warming draw. Now comes along the warming draw. Now the question with the warming draw is very fundamental. How do we compare a warming draw? Is a warming draw like a hot plate? Like Ramesh's hot plate? Like a different type of hot plate? Problem with a warming draw is you're not going to be able to probably do this half second day or turn over an overturned pan. Why not? Because you're putting it into something. So putting an overturned pan probably will not work. Then comes the question is how hot does the warming draw get? And a lot of these things is millions of types. Some of them, they call it a warming draw. It's by all definitions a mini oven. They just make it smaller, so it's labeled as a warming draw, but it goes up to 450 degrees. So what makes that a warming draw? I, and that type, I don't think anyone holds. You could put Nasina straight into a warming draw that goes up to 450. I don't, I don't believe anyone holds that. I don't, I, again, you never know what people say. I don't believe anyone holds that. Why? Because it's an oven. I think we did this back in the first year. You're never allowed to put food in an oven on Shabbos. Why not? Now we understand it, full circle. Because it looks like cooking. So let's say the next level of warming draws that doesn't get that hot. So now you have a question. Is it normal to cook in a warming draw? Because that's the way we're explaining our Moshe Feinstein. So someone would come along and say, it's not normal because you have a regular oven. But if I didn't have a regular oven, would I cook in it? I don't know. I could slow cook in it. I, I, I'm not really sure. So what many, what, what many pies can say to do is, to, so excuse me, before I get to many pies say to do, when we have a knob, we have another problem. Excuse me, I'll come back to what many pies say to do in a moment. This is really the problem. If I have my warming draw with a knob, if I have a hot plate with a knob, what's my problem? The other concern that we started with. You gotta do something to the flame, you gotta do something to the knob. So you have to cover it, you have to cover the heat source, there is no heat source, it gets a little bit complicated. And this is where, back to our warming draw, some say, so cover the knob, the button. A lot of them have buttons, a lot of them have buttons. So cover the buttons. 
Adkan, what people say. And is there a makam to be makal to cover the buttons and put food in? I believe yes, but really for a different reason. And we can give a whole share on this, which we don't have time for right now. There's another sigya. There's another sigya. And we'll do this very quickly just to give a little, little taste. Something called tach betit. Tach betit was a way that they sealed up ovens, bisman chazal, with tit, with, with, with plaster. Something that is tach betit, it's out of the gzeris of Bishel. How far out of the gzeris of Bishel? Very good question. There's a Mishnah Bura that says he's not sure, he's misupik, he's cheshish, whatever it is. Why is that relevant to us? So the question is, what if I disable buttons? What if I lock buttons? What if I actually were to like totally cover over the panel, like, you know, something like these thermostats, you know, you put a lock on it. And the place keep talking about this. They had a mikvayis. The Shiloh on the mikvah was that there's heating going on and they wanted to figure out how do you cover over the, the buttons for the heat source. So one of the hatayr and the chuvas they were trying to say is go over the buttons and lock it up. And it's called tach betit. And if it's tach betit, it's maybe a higher level of hatayr and it might allow more. Shlom Zalman Arbach held. It might be difficult to understand. And Rav Pesach Leo Falk, the Machs says the same. That you're allowed to cover something with tape. A piece of tape, I heard it from his mouth, not from his almonds, from Marcel Yo. Sella tape is what the English clever call it. We call it scotch tape. I guess in England it's called sella, maybe, or I just said something very silly. I don't know what the word means. But either way, he said, cover it over with tape, and then it's fine. And everyone in the room says, tape, just take off the tape. <laughs> what does that do for me? Tach the tape, there's like a whole thing, you have to break it. He says, no, it's difficult to do, and that's enough. So it could be if we're dealing with something called a warming draw which is in a Suffolk world between a hot plate and a blech, meaning it gets up to the 250, 300 degrees, so it could cook, but people don't cook in it. The answer that Paiskim say to cover over the buttons with tape might be that you have an additional heter here of tach betet. Does that help to put in a seed on the That's a Suffolk of the Mishtabura, and that is what many are Saimechan. I'll mention what one Rav said to me. I have zero clue if this is MS. This is what he said to me. He's, he's someone who's very close to Rabbi Forst. Rabbi Newman Forst from all the arts books. He said to me, there's a scientific problem with hot plates that makes all Shiloh doesn't start. Okay, what's the problem? He said that there's a sensor, and everyone could argue, not argue, he claims he tried them. There's a sensor that every single time you open up the door, it turns off the heat. Every single time you close the door, it turns back on the heat. In a warming jar. That's what he said to me. I said, oh, well, he said, I tried so many of them. And then he started going into the science behind it, why it has to be true. I have no clue what he was talking about. I, I, I hope the ones with that took care of this. I have no clue. That's, oh, good, 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 good. And that's what we'll conclude with. First, before we get to Yatsa Ledesbai, you're saying that you're making the warming jar less than Yatsa Ledesbai? So what number are you putting it on? You put it on like mamish cold, like 150. Yeah. Good, good. So that, that, that goes back to really uh, circling around this whole 170. 170's whole shell, what's the odds less? 190, if you want to go shikl uh, chasid, the the tail of said 190. But Ramesha was chayshish a little bit cooler. But um, that really centers around this whole hot plate shayla. The Ramesha says it's not able to cook, it could cook. So how hot is it? Meaning, why don't we just say, if it's 190 degrees, let's just use that number, 170, it could cook. What's the difference of everything else? So the answer is here, there's something more fundamental, is that it looks like cooking. Oh, so now you want to know, but I'm going to make it colder. So this goes back to something else that we mentioned. Something that looks like cooking, let's say my oven, let's say my oven, this is the biggest misconception in the world, and, and I, I, it's not a question of the star cakes. They write in the manual, don't do what I'm about to say, but everyone thinks that they don't write that because they don't read the manuals because they're all under whatever the age group is of reading manuals. And I, they also have a video, they don't even watch that, that an oven, I don't care if I, put, if I put my oven at 150 degrees, could I put food into it on Shabbos? Many people think yes. I will not tell you how many tens of people I met that says, what do you mean the oven's on very, very low? 160 degrees, it's the lowest setting of the oven. Why is it? Oh, so that, that's part of the problem. In the Star K oven, they say it's on Shabbos mode, but it's an oven. An oven is an entity that you're not allowed to put food in it because you have the near Kumavasha. That's the problem. That is the problem. I, it's only 160. I, I looked, I, I, I tried, I asked around, I've asked other people to ask all their maybe uh, black market source to rub on him to find someone that will say it's motor. I've yet to find someone that says you can put something into a proper oven on Shabbos. I've yet to find someone. I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying. 
and no one does? And the answer is because it's a nira. Once in the world of a nira, it's usher. Oh, so the problem is Rochesh for Bolshitis, in Echanami. Life would be much easier if we didn't have to, uh, if we didn't have to contend. What? If you, if you didn't have to contend with. I put a second pair of phone. Like, so, anyways, that's the problem with an oven. The warming draw, though, now if you put the two together, then you have what to talk with. If my warming draws are not so hot, and they might not cook, and you cover over the, the knobs, that's what many places can say. And Lemaisa, Lechaira, Yesh, Makam, Lahakal. To conclude, you asked about a chala. So, this is really another sigi that we didn't talk about called Hatamana. Something called Hatamana. What's Hatamana? Hatamana means enwrapped in heat. Hatamana is an interesting iser. It's one of the only isurim that's usur, even on Erev Shabbos even on Erev Shabbos, that you're not allowed to do, be matmin something, you're not allowed to wrap something in a heat source. On Shabbos, you're allowed to do it in certain scenarios. So now, making a very long story too short, if I want to take a challah, and I want to put it on top of my crock pot, on top of my chicken soup pot, on top of my overturned pan, like we just spoke about, am I allowed to wrap up the challah? What's the shayla? Shayla's wait, it's called hatmana. Why is it called hatmana? Because I'm wrapping something up, and it's on a heat source. And that is the reason why there are some that are machmir. Now, there's two simple kulas, one that everyone will agree to, almost, and one that many agree to. What are the two simple kulas? And, and the reason why I'm saying simple kulas is something, what do you need a kula for? Just take the foil, put it down, and just sit the chal on top of it. And if anyone has ever tried that, then your chal doesn't get warm. <laughs> that, that's the reason. So the question is, is there a way to actually warm up my chal if I wanted it at room temperature? I would have kept it on the counter. So the answer is two things. One, which everyone agrees to, let's say your chal is fully wrapped in your foil. Open it up a little bit. Open, pasuach b'miksas is enough in the world of atamana. How much is a little bit? A little bit. I don't think it means take out a, micro, you know, a, a, a tweezer and open it a dot. But it means just open it a little bit, open a corner. That's enough in the world of Atamana that would be matter to wrap up your challah. And that's a simple etza. And you can also wrap it. It doesn't have to be if it was wrapped. You can take your challah, you can wrap it up, and just open the corner up, and then it'll be warm. The other etza is many paiskim. We mentioned uh, the Machs so we'll say him as well. I believe Shem Zalman and Shev Levi go with this Mahalach. In the world of Atamana, every item is allowed to get one covering. Like Kacha. You learn Atamana, complicated din. Just like you're allowed to cover a pot, why is it not Atamana? Million dollar Shaila. Machabra is maybe more violent about such a thing. But the Ma'is, the Paisa can say every item, every food item is allowed to get one cover. So my one cover is going to be my foil. What about stacking? What about stacking? Is that what you asked? Stacking. So again, let's get to stacking. So again, so the halach on the chala, the answer is, you should open up the corner. That's what you should do. You want to know, is there a makam to be makal to keep the whole thing covered? Yes. It's a little bit of a problem, because often with the foil, you end up doing it to more than one layer. Just the way that it works. You know, it goes a little bit over each side, and then it's a little bit questionable. So you open up the corner. When it comes to stacking, so stacking on top of a heat source you're talking about, I'm assuming. Right, is that called that tamana? Is that called that tamana, that everything is, everything is covered? There's a shave at a levy that... Um, you know, calls into question this, this, this practice. The answer is, as long as you don't cover over the whole thing, then you're going to be fine. There is a chumra, which is interesting to think about. If this whole, if my bimi here was mahaplate, and I were to full it up every inch, so then, and then I put something on top, so then the guys in the bottom are fully surrounded. The answer is, each one is his own separate item. On that level, one could certainly be, not certainly, one could be makel, but if you were to then go and take the towel, which they sell, which is, it's, it, which is a shtickle michshel. It's not a michshel, it's only michshel if you use it wrong. If you use it right, it's okay. I mean, if you keep the sides open, that's what it's made for. You just cover it like this, and the sides are still open. But if you go and you buy the extra large, and you put it on a smaller guy, and now the whole thing is fully wrapped, and, oh, look, I figured out the way to get my food boiling hot. That's great. <laughs> you might as well just have forgotten the whole thing and thrown it in the oven for the same price, because, I mean, what? Yeah, the baldy story there, I don't know. So that is the story with Hatamana. So in summation, What's hafsikadeira? Hafsikadeira is the way that you heat up something on Shabbos. You want to take food from your fridge. Cold items. Dry items. Dry. No liquid. What is called no liquid? For the sake of simplistic purposes, we're going to say no liquid. What's considered cold? What's considered cold? Anything. I don't care. We can in the fridge. That's for sure. No liquid. Everyone wants to know, what about the meat that was sitting in the gravy? No liquid. You want to know, can I take the meat out of the gravy and pat dry it, and maybe there's a few drops of liquid that, you know, that's going to get absorbed inside? That will be fine. You want to know something like uh, poppers that have congealed liquid? That's, that's a big shayla, and we can give a whole share on that, which we're not going to do right now. But 
Anything dry, if something's wet and you have a particular shadow, we can figure it out. But anything dry, you can heat up on Shabbos, like Kogol, like Schnitzel, like Chala. I'm sure there's other examples. You can heat them up on Shabbos. How? By putting it on a hefzik there. What is hefzik there? Overturn pan on top of a heat source. Either your chalapat, your chicken soup, or if you have a blech, or you have a hot plate, you flip over a pan. Can you crush it? Yes. And then you put the food on top of that. We'll conclude with desserts. Are, are a shikel, you know, you want to heat up a chocolate brownie. I'm not going to go into the souffle because then we're going to get complicated. What is a souffle? But a fake chocolate souffle, which means that it's not raw cake. If it's raw cake, then it's a shiloh. We're not going to get involved in that. It's, a, it's, a, it's another whole share. We're going to talk about a chocolate brownie. What's a chocolate brownie? It's chocolate chips. So when I, someone says, wait, one minute, I put it on top of the overturned pan, the chocolate chips are going to melt a little bit. As long as they're going to melt a little bit, which means they're going to go from hard to mushy-ish, that's okay. If somehow it's going to melt and it's going to become like your chocolate chips are going to be running off, I don't know, you probably threw out the hot plate before it blows up your house because that's very odd. And that would be mutter shkoyah.